I don't usually do opinion pieces, but I think there's, uh, there's a time and a place and this is it. Altruism barely exists in lots of places these days. It might exist within people, but I don't believe it generally exists within large corporations. And with that in mind, we're going to be talking about the re-release of the Affinity Suite. Uh, it's no longer called the Affinity Suite. There's no longer Affinity Photo, Affinity Design. Can't even think what they were called. Um, I, I barely used them myself. But of course, what's happened now is that they've uh, combined three applications and squashed them into one, and uh, they've introduced a new price for it. That new price is a big fat zero. How can they do this? And what's the motivation behind it? It's great getting software for free. I mean, let's face it, it will stop piracy. The other thing it's going to stop is Adobe subscriptions. And let's make no bones about this whatsoever. There's a number of elements of what's happened uh, with Affinity uh, here and its parent company, its relatively new parent company, Canva. Because, of course, beforehand, it was a British company and had been a British company, Serif, for decades. I remember Serif going back to the 90s, producing really low-cost uh, DTP software and such. And yeah, it, it was it was good stuff for the money. I never liked it, but then again, I was used to Quark Express and things like that. So yeah, there's no particular comparison. But hey, if you all you had was seventy quid or whatever it happened to be, it was great value. And this is where kind of affinity came into it, and yeah, you know, really good value software, really capable software, but nowhere near where Adobe was pushing Photoshop. But of course, Affinity became a kind of poor man's Photoshop. Uh, and there are people that may well argue uh, at this point because I know Affinity is really, um, really capable, but more capable to kind of Photoshop CS5 rather than Photoshop in 2025. But there's an important point that comes in with that as well. And before I digress too far, let's just look at this important point. The important point in Photoshop 2025 is that it's an incredible application. And I would imagine that the vast majority of individuals that subscribe to it, and therefore that's the only way they can get it these days, I would imagine that the majority of those people never use most of the functions. So is this, uh, this move from Affinity going to dent Adobe's bottom line? You bet. Oh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. It's going to hurt in a very big way. But there's a number of things you need to uh, consider. Firstly, Affinity is more akin to uh, Photoshop than it is to Lightroom. Uh, really, I mean, the Affinity is no Lightroom. It does have raw processing capabilities, but Lightroom knocks them into a cocked hat. And anyone that's a subscriber to Adobe right now will probably seriously be thinking about stopping that subscription because they can get the, the you know, three quarters of the software, so to speak, for nothing. Why would you pay $20 or whatever it happens to be a month for software that you can get for nada? It's an interesting question and only one that, that individuals can probably uh, answer for themselves. But I do want to make a couple of important points. Firstly, let's look at the timing of this announcement. So early in October, Affinity said that uh, they were turning off the purchasing of its, uh, its applications and announcing that something was going to happen. And of course, you had a month of kind of speculation and such. And I, f I forgot about it, actually. <laughs> um, I, I did send an email to Affinity saying, look, uh, I'm a, a journalist. It's not untrue. Um, yeah, would you uh, yeah, let me in on what's going on and I can preview something? No, they didn't get back to me. I'm not big enough. I'm not important enough. Maybe they didn't talk to anybody. I've not seen uh, anyone kind of uh, say, uh, yeah, we knew this was happening. Or Anyway, it's unimportant. What I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that turning off 
the purchasing for a month created a bit of a buzz. It created an, an uncertainty. Uh, it created an uncertainty in me because for a long while I had actually been thinking about buying it because I no longer uh, have a, an Adobe subscription. And I thought, well, well, maybe, maybe not. And then they closed the purchasing and I thought, oh God, now I'm not going to even have the opportunity of buying it because it's going to come back and it's going to be all this really expensive or it's going to be a subscription or it's going to be all of the things I didn't want. And actually it's come back and it's absolutely free. I think it's a bold move. It's a really bold move. But actually I think we need to examine the timing because the timing I think is absolutely crucial to this. It's near perfect. I might have considered doing it two months or a month earlier. I might have considered doing this in September, but who's to say that, uh, that I could possibly be right here. But the reason the timing is important is because Black Friday. Now, last year, Affinity offered uh, the entire suite of, the suite of three things for 80 quid, whereas ordinarily, I think there'd be 70 more, 80 pounds each or 80 dollars or whatever. And I thought it was a really good deal, but I didn't buy it because, well, you know, I didn't have 80 quid to spare. And I didn't feel that I needed it enough at the time, although I have missed that functionality uh, in the uh, intervening time. But... Black Friday is also when a vast, the vast number of uh, individual subscribers, I would say, I mean, I've got no metrics for this, but I would imagine a great number of people buy Adobe subscriptions on Black Friday because of the deals. What's Adobe going to do this year? Because here and now, I can imagine there's a great many Adobe subscribers thinking, what the bloody hell do I need this for? Why do I need to spend this money every month? I can get what I have now. Okay, yeah, maybe not quite what I have now, but kind of 75, 80% of what I have now, arguably, uh, for, uh, for, for, for nothing. Why, why will I stay with Adobe? And the key thing, of course, with these subscriptions is they're a month, they're, they're 12 months. You, you can't get a kind of dip in and out of it. I, I think Adobe might allow you to on occasion, but it's, it, it's punitively expensive to do it. And I think there's a lot of people that are going to be saying, yeah, 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 I, I'm, I'm going to kick Adobe into touch with this because, <laughs> well, why not? And the key thing, is that now you can just download Affinity and you've got a few weeks to play with it before you tell Adobe to go themselves. And I think that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be giving the middle finger to Adobe at the end of November. Now we need to be absolutely certain uh, that we understand what we uh, are getting with Affinity because you're getting uh, an illustration package, a photo editing package, and a, uh, a design package, a page layout package. All three of these things uh, compete directly with Adobe's Photoshop, to a degree Lightroom, but to a lesser degree, uh, InDesign and Illustrator. Now to get Illustrator and InDesign uh, in an Adobe subscription, it's punitively expensive because the, the photo package is basically Photoshop and, Illus and, um, and Lightroom. Perhaps you don't want those, uh, those services. A lot of photographers won't need those services. But now you can have them for nothing and just play to your heart's content. But what do you have with Adobe that you will lose with Affinity? Well, it's mostly Lightroom, in my view, because I don't think a lot of people will be using the additional features uh, of Photoshop anyway. And Affinity uh, Photo is incredibly powerful and always was for the relatively small amount of money they wanted for it. You lose AI masking, for sure. Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> is is that a loss? I, I have never found the AI masking in any application to be worthy. And I know for certain that the Lightroom stuff is at 
best floored. So you've not got a, a big loss there. You, you lose a certain amount of other raw controls with Affinity 2. And I would honestly say that if you are a heavy Lightroom user, I would, I would seriously consider uh, moving, if, if you're gonna go for Affinity, I would seriously consider getting an additional raw package. Uh, from perhaps DxO, uh, and, th and I'm not going to pretend for one second that that is necessarily a cheap purchase, but it is a one-off purchase, and this is the key thing here, because if you could turn around and say, well, I'm going to buy the DxO software, uh, Photo Lab, for uh, whatever the, the price is, and then stop your Adobe subscription, you've effectively spent your Adobe subscription in one go, dumped Adobe, so you lost all of that reliance on them uh, and, and the reliance on keeping that subscription going. And this is an important point. Uh, I made a video about this earlier in the year because of course uh, you have to keep paying Adobe to keep using the software all the time. And, and it, it's a real, it, it's, a, it's a drain on resources. I don't think a serious photographer is going to be able to lose Lightroom and gain affinity because I don't think affinity has got enough in it. But let's let's also look at what might happen uh, coming kind of coming out of this. So first up, going forward, we need to consider the altruism uh, of this. Affinity have said it will always be free, and I suppose none of us have got anything. Uh, to, to say against this. We can't doubt this because it's what they've said. But I'm certain that what will happen is that new features that get introduced to it will be introduced in a much smaller way to the free version than they will be to those uh, people that have premium Canva subscriptions because that's where uh, a lot of the kind of AI and the premium features come in. You have to have a Canva subscription. In actual fact, you can't download Affinity now without actually having a Canva account. So first off, straight off the bat, of course, they're getting your personal details for registering. Well, everyone's got our personal details these days. We sacrifice them all the time uh, for convenience. So perhaps that's not big, a big enough problem, but it will cost you a hundred dollars, a hundred pounds a year, or whatever it happens to be in your local currency, to have a premium Canva um, uh, subscription. Now, if all, all you're doing with that is to use uh, the premium uh, affinity features, you're probably not going to be getting a great uh, amount of value out of it. But of course, Canva has uh, so much more to offer as well, and I'm not going to go into that. I don't know a great deal about it, uh, but I do know that it's very well respected. I think most people that want to just use Affinity won't notice um, uh, any particular deficiencies from not having that. But what's going to happen, of course, is that when new features are introduced, they may be introduced in a much smaller way to the free version and uh, be given uh, uh, yeah, many fuller features in the paid version. I don't think anyone's going to have any surprises uh, about that in any way, shape or form. It's, it's, that's going to be absolutely fine for most people. Will it always be free? That's what they've said. Treat it as an absolute gift for the moment. Um, yeah, and we have to see what happens going forward. But I think, I think this is a, a big, big, big change in the industry. We do see free software, free, absolutely professional software. I mean, you just look at DaVinci Resolve. It's an incredible uh, piece of video editing software that I'm using all the time now uh, uh, as, uh, as I basically kicked Adobe into, uh, in, into touch 18 months ago now. It's possible for these companies to produce free software because they're gaining something on the back of it. They're gaining your data, they're gaining your subscriptions, they're gaining all kinds of things. Uh, so it's not entirely altruistic, but hey, if they're giving it away, use it, enjoy it, test it, whatever it happens to be. Because if you've only got a few weeks to tell Adobe to go themselves, uh, you need to do it now because if your subscription's coming up, they will just lump you in for another 12 months uh, unless you tell them you don't want it. So go do it now, 
save yourself a whole heap of time and, and, and money and if you are interested in uh, the DxO software, there are links down below. Again, you can use this free for 30 days. You know, there's a free 30 day trial. You don't have to pay anything for it. Um, check out the links down below. Give these things a go and, uh, and, and perhaps make some decisions before Black Friday.